Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about what is engine braking and what is a jake brake. And engine braking very simply is using the engine of your car to slow it down. And so there's three major methods for which this is done, but ultimately what you're doing is you're putting heat into the engine rather than putting that heat into the brakes, the brake rotors, in order to slow down your vehicle. So these are the three major methods we're going to be talking about. One of them used in gasoline, two of these used in diesel setups, and these aren't mutually exclusive. You could have a diesel using both or just one or the other. So first getting into the gasoline version, uh, basically with this, when you let your foot off the throttle and you are leaving it in gear, the throttle body is going to close. And so now as your piston moves down for the intake stroke, it's going to be trying to pull air in, but this throttle body is preventing that. So it's pulling a vacuum. So a little bit of air is going to pass through, uh, but not much. And so you're pulling a strong vacuum and that vacuum is what's going to slow down your vehicle. Now in a diesel engine, uh, traditionally you won't have throttle bodies. And so because of that, what they've done is they've added one on, on the exhaust side. So after your uh, power stroke, your piston comes down and then it's pushing that exhaust out. Well, what you'll do is you'll have this throttle body, which will close up and create back pressure and that resists the engine. And so it's going to slow down the vehicle because the engine is connected once you're in gear uh, to the wheels. And so that motion is going to resist because of the back pressure, uh, your vehicle from moving forward. So your vehicle is going to slow down. So then we have our final method, uh, which is the Jake brake. It's commonly referred to as a Jake brake after the company that invented it, I believe, which is called Jacobs. And so here, what we have is our four strokes. We've got our intake, compression, power, and exhaust. And what they've done with this system is, so intake happens like normal, compression happens like normal. And then right when you get to top dead center in the compression stroke, your exhaust valve is gonna open up. So instead of that combustion mix uh, pushing down, you've got all that pressure uh, that's been built up in there. And now instead of that pressure going back into the engine and rotating it and thus providing you know, uh, torque back to the wheels, um, essentially what you're doing is you're letting all of that pressure escape. So you've compressed all that air and then you're just letting all of it escape. And in doing so, you're wasting energy. Basically, you've turned your engine into an air compressor that's just sending that compressed air out the exhaust. So it's doing work, uh, but not useful work, and that's just slowing your vehicle down and then your exhaust stroke will happen like normal. And so how does this work? How does it open up that exhaust valve right at the top dead center or very close to it? And obviously there's gonna be clearances uh, so that that valve can open up and it won't come into contact with the piston. So here we have what the system's going to look like and you've got this little engine oil path right here. So you have your engine oil which is gonna come in that's pumped in by the engine oil pump. You've got a solenoid which controls the flow of that engine oil into this system. So that'll open up allowing oil to flow in here. That oil is going to come into this control valve and there's this ball right here which it's going to push up and then that oil can flow within these two pistons. And so it'll move into the slave piston and the master piston. Uh, the slave piston is up against this exhaust valve and so it's got pressure there. Um, so it won't be able to do anything to move that slave piston. Uh, the master piston, however, isn't going to have much resistance and so it's gonna push it down onto a rocker arm. Now this rocker arm is gonna be either used for the fuel injector, which you can have on diesel systems, or the exhaust valve uh, rocker arm for another cylinder. Now the reason you would do it for the fuel injector for this cylinder is because that will time it so that when it's close to top dead center, it will uh, activate that rocker arm and that's what we need in order for this system to work. So how this happens is your oil flow comes in, it pushes down that master piston right before this comes up to top dead center, your cam here is gonna wanna inject fuel and so it's gonna rotate and it's gonna rotate this rocker arm. Now you can see that rocker arm is gonna press up against this master piston. That's gonna push this oil in here back. And so as it pushes that oil back, this ball right here is gonna come down and close off. So now you've got a closed system. You've got pressure built up in here. You can't push this cam down. I mean, that's a hard contact right there and you can't push any flow through this. So the only way the oil pressure can move is by moving this slave piston down. So it moves that slave piston down, which opens up the exhaust valve there at top dead center. And then you have your engine braking system uh, working functionally. So that's how a Jake brake system works. And again, you could have both of these systems on the same vehicle or just use one or the other. And then in gasoline, you're simply creating a vacuum in order to have engine braking. So thank you all for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.